The Sun is Also a Star, pages 205 to 208. Natasha. My father and I were close once in Jamaica, and even after we moved here, we were inseparable. Most times it felt like me and my dad, the dreamers, against my mom and my brother, the non-dreamers. He and I watched cricket together. I was his audience when he ran lines for auditions. When he was finally a famous Broadway actor, he would get me all the best parts for little girls, he'd say. I listened to his stories about how life, how our life would be after he would became famous. I listened long after my mom and my brother had stopped listening. Things started to change about four years ago when I was 13. My mom got sick of living in a one bedroom apartment. All of her friends in Jamaica lived in their own houses. She got sick of my dad working the same job for basically the same pay. She got sick of hearing what would happen when his ship came in. She never said anything to him, though only to me. You children too big to be sleeping in the living room now. You need pri your privacy. I'm never going to have a real kitchen and a real fridge. It's time for him to give up that foolishness now. And then he lost his job. I don't know if he was fired or laid off. My mom said once that she thought he quit, but she couldn't prove it. On the day it happened, he said, maybe it's a blessing in disguise. Give me more time to pursue me acting. I don't know who he was talking to, but no one responded. Now that he wasn't working, he said he would audition for roles, but he hardly ever did. There's always an excuse. Me not right for that part. Them not going to like me accent, man. Me getting too old now. Acting is a young man game. When my mom got home from work in the evening, my father told her he was trying, but my brother and I knew better. I still remember the first time we saw him disappear into a play. Peter and I walked home from school. We knew something strange was up because the front door was hanging open. Our father was in the living room, our bedroom. I don't know if he didn't hear us come in, but he didn't react. He was holding a book in his hand. Later, I realized it was an actually a play, A Raisin in the Sun. He was wearing a white button-up shirt and slacks and reciting lines. I'm not sure why he was even holding the play because he already had it memorized. I still remember parts of the monologue. The character said something about seeing his future stretched out in front of him and how it, the future, was just looming empty space. When my father finally noticed us watching, he scolded us for sneaking up on him. At first, I thought he was just embarrassed. No one likes being caught unawares. Later, though, I realized it was more than that. He was ashamed, as if we caught him cheating or stealing. After that, he and I didn't do much of anything together anymore. He stopped watching cricket. He turned down all my offers to help him memorize lines. His side of my parents' bedroom grew more cluttered with stacks of used and yellowed paperbacks of famous plays. He knew all the roles, not just the leads, but the bit parts as well. Eventually, he stopped with all the pretense of auditioning or looking for a job. My mom gave up the pretense that we'd ever own a house or even find an apartment with more than one bedroom. She took extra shifts at work to make ends meet. Last summer, I got a job at McDonald's instead of volunteering at the New York Methodist Hospital like I used to. It's been over three years of this. We come home from school to find him locked in his bedroom, running lines with no one. His favorite parts are the long dramatic monologues. He is Macbeth and Walter Lee Younger. He complains bitterly about this or that actor and his lack of skills. He heaps praise on those he judged to be good. Two months ago though, no, through no fault of his own, he got a part. Someone he met years ago during one of his auditions was staging a production of A Raisin in the Sun. When he told my mom, the first thing she asked was, how much you getting paid? Not congratulations. Not I'm so proud of you. Not which part or when is it? Or are you so excited? Just how much you getting paid? She looked at him with flat eyes when she said it. Unimpressed eyes. Tired eyes that had just come off two shifts in a row. I think we were all a little shocked. She even shocked herself. Yes, yeah, she'd been frustrated with him for years, but that one moment showed us all how far apart they really were now.
Even Peter, who sides with my mother in all things, flinched a little. Still, you couldn't falter. Not really. My father had been dreaming his life away for years. He lived in those plays instead of the real world. He still does. My mother didn't have time for dreaming anymore. Neither do I. 